and even entrepreneurs, one of the things that bothers us is how to get the best out of the people that we manage, that we lead. And um, this is this famous story of motivation. How do you motivate people to give you the maximum output? Of course, the interest in motivation is from time immemorial. Um, you know, people have always wanted to know why somebody has done something. And uh, to the extent that people want to know why did Judas, is a crowd, betray Jesus? What was the motivation? The, the 30 pieces of silver that he got, was that the motivation? So everything that we do, we, we need to understand there is something that drives us into doing it. Uh, when you are hungry, you go to eat. When you feel thirsty, you want to drink some water or drink something. So there is something that drives you to do whatever you do. So in the workplace, what is it that drives people to be able to do or not do things? Why do some people come late? Why do some people feel they, they don't want to make reports about what they're doing? Why do some people feel that um, you know, others are oppressing them? Why do these people who are said to be oppressing, oppressing the others? Everybody has a reason why he or she does something. That is motivation. So, because of the industrialization, industrial system that came from the Industrial Revolution, the concept of motivation now started becoming something that people need to study and understand. Otherwise, the feudal society where people produce for self-consumption, there, there was no need to really have, have an understanding of motivation to, to a great extent. I mean, you went to the garden to dig for what you're going to eat. Of course, other things came up in terms of government, in terms of uh, why do people kill others. Uh, all these are issues that uh, are important in understanding what is it that motivates a person and what you need to do when you are in a situation where you have people you are managing and a variety of people because not everybody is motivated in the same way. So the concept of motivation really was, was started in um, uh, around the 1900 something with, by, by, by Frederick Taylor. Frederick Taylor is called the father of scientific management because he was the first person to, to, to advocate for applying science to management. At that time, there was a lot of labor shortages uh, worldwide, and uh, this is a time when many companies, especially in the U.S. and Europe, were exploiting slaves. You didn't have to pay them. So you, whatever they produced, you accepted. But as, there, as labor shortages grew in, in various places, in various industries, the need for motivation became important. So uh, Frederick Taylor tells us that if you want to get maximum output from somebody, give them a good salary, improve working conditions. However, subsequently, many people who are trying out to see what Taylor was saying have found that actually salary may not, be, may not necessarily be important. They have found that the behavior of people is important in understanding what motivates an individual. So a variety of theories, a variety of people have come up, including Abraham Maslow, Douglas McGregor, and many others. They've come up to explain what actually motivates an individual. And you'll see that whoever says something, you really feel that this is what motivates an individual. But when you come to learn what somebody else has said, you say, okay, maybe that doesn't work. So in this series, we're going to see what is motivation, what motivates an individual. What are these various people saying? And of course, when you have large numbers, can you have a, 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 a one fix for all the employees? Which definitely is not true. So join us as we discuss more about motivation.